construction setting. We're going to ask that you would please respect the family. These are the persons of Mr. Eric Hobart, Mr. Tony Martin, Minister Frank Ray Jr., and Bishop Adrian Rogers. If you would please, all four, we know that Bishop Rogers is here and ready, but if those gentlemen are here, would you please make your way here to my left and to your right so that you can appropriately come after the other has finished. We will begin with Mr. Eric Colbert. Are you here? Thank you so much, sir. Would you please come? You can come. You can come. Mr. Tony Martin, would you please come? Minister Frank Ray Jr., would you please come? And would you please stand here? There is a microphone here on the floor to accommodate you. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank God for the shade. Thank God for the I met the shade uh, two or three years ago. He came to play for the Riverside. And uh, I couldn't I couldn't imagine or I couldn't understand why somebody sounds so good and they play so good. And uh, I couldn't do it too. I was just, I was just upset about it. But now, uh, <laughs> now but, 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 but uh, I understood that, that, that uh, this, this cat, I got to get to know this cat, but this cat is uh, something else. And uh, we left her and he said, let's, let's go play some food. You want to go play some food? And that's how I started. I said, um, I said well, you know, uh, okay. And uh, we ended up being at the pool hall. It was about uh, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And I said, well, you know, I got to go home. He said, well, uh, <laughs> Well, what you gonna do tomorrow? I said, okay, I don't know. I'm ready. Whatever you want to do. And then he, he kept on, kept on. And uh, he said, call me. What you doing, man? I said, nothing. You know, I ain't have a job. <laughs> If y'all don't know, this, these are not my bodyguards. Okay? <laughs> this is my uh, Hong Kong crew. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know if Miko knew them already, but uh, I introduced him to Dee Dee and Dee and Red. And uh, we, 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 uh, we went to Hong Kong, and that's when it started, the crew. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I ain't never laughed my, in my life like that. Uh, Shay just sick. <laughs> just straight up silly. Uh, now I'm going to live it by. I, I got one more minute. Uh, <laughs> I know, Sean. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I made sure that I didn't come by myself. I wanted that, that, that first crew that I, before I knew Sean, Sharif, Shadow, Devil Norman, Junior Norman. Before I knew <laughs> Mom and Dad. Well, I knew that. I knew uh, this was the crew, and we all hung out and had fun. Shay just, I would tell y'all something. Shay loved fun and yeah. I mean, I, I, this day, I, I didn't really want to come, but I, 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 I understand God had to gain a, a great man in there. But I'm telling you, Shay loved fun and laughter. And my one minute, my three minutes up, but I, I, I couldn't come without bringing my the first crew. Uh, my Hong Kong crew, thank y'all so much. Love y'all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I just want to say this. First of all, I thank God for faith. He said a lot of people probably lied to be here. Supposed to be at work, had doctor's appointment. Well, I'm not supposed to be here. I didn't lie. But I thank God for favor. They said, Tony, do what you got to do. Amen. So those folks are going to have no supervision at all. Right now. But I will be back. I will be back. Yes, sir. Because she wants me to do something at the end of this. Shay Norman 
I believe somebody might want to look it up, the song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. That dude was always happy, man. I mean, I, I sat at home and tried to think of a time where I saw him stomping and frustrated. I really couldn't think of a time where I saw that. He used to call me Big Brother. But if I didn't learn anything else from Shay, I learned that life is too short. You need to be happy, enjoy life. Thank God for life. And lastly, thank God for friends. I'm telling you something, your friends are not just the people you hang with all the time. Your friends are those people that are really gonna be there when you really need them. You find out who your real friends are. And I can honestly say that Shay was a true friend. And I gotta be obedient. Sean wanted me to say something about this. The boy, Eric just said he's seven. Shay was talking about a rehearsal they need to go to, and Damien Savage was supposed to be going with him. He didn't have a ride. I said, Shay, you can use the car, man. Oh, man, I can use the car. I said, yeah, you can use the car. Oh, man, cool. Shay comes back to the house. He wet, the inside of the car is wet. <laughs> Come to find out, well, before he left, I told him that the T's were off of the car, it was a little 300. And he said, oh, okay, so I didn't think anything of it. But when he gets back, this dude has ridden around, picked somebody up, gave them an umbrella. <laughs> they got umbrellas sticking out of the top of the car. He comes back to the house. I said, Shay, what's up with that? Man, you didn't, you didn't have any teeth? I said, Shay, they're in the back of the car. They're strapped down in the back of the car. So this guy rolled around with the teeth out of the car. Lastly, 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 I just want to say this. If Shay Norman ever did this song, y'all would never want to hear me do it again, probably. But I'm just going to do just a piece of it. Jesus, you are, you are the center.
Talk to me. I told him there's some other folks you could have came in. Oh. Now you heard about it. Yeah. Said, well, you know so too. I know them. I got their number. You hear me? Huh? To the left shade a little bit. Let me say to the family and to each of you. That when it comes to our loved ones, I gotta live. <laughs> we have to learn how to love them while they live. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to release them when they leave. Yes. And lastly, you gotta lay on the Lord. Yes. Love you. All right. Bishop W.L. Porter was first appointed to central jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor Norman walked up to me and I didn't know who he was. He looked at me with that raspy voice. He said, I know you. He said, you superintendent Charles Rogers, so you come with me. And I was about 14 then and I had been suspended from school three times. <laughs> Whenever I heard a boy say, you come with me, I was scared. <laughs> I was like, I just got here, what I do? <laughs> and uh, 20 minutes later, we were in I don't rehearsal know what this I was playing the organ. And I'd never been in a rehearsal yeah, like that. It was crazy, and back and find the name of the Lord, and it was just amazing. Then we found and met the rest of the family, and they were very young then. And they put them up to sing in a meeting. And I was just mesmerized to hear them. And I, the song that I remember most was Safe in His Arms. Right. And they could turn that song so many ways and make it work. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, Shay was unselfish like his father, mm -hmm. his family. Shay went anywhere to sing and play the organ. I'm talking about three points. It's a little warm in here. And um, um, also, my wife uh, had a home baby here many years ago. We lived here in Memphis and, uh, well, in, in Memphis. And Shallon was one of her early uh, uh, people yeah. that stayed, uh, that she kept during the day. And, uh, I worked for Hammond Organ Company for many years, and they would always send me to the Gospel Music Workshop of America. And uh, it was in Kansas City one year, and we were driving up. And this song came on the radio. As soon as we got close to Kansas City, I was looking for a gospel station, found one. And I heard this song, Tis So Sweet. Yeah. And I was like, who is that? And especially when he started talking about daddy, daddy. And I said, now that was just brilliant right there. And at the end of that song, they sang a new single by Shane Norman. I had a fit. I was like, is that serious right there? <laughs> An amazing talent. And I can't stand the Bible talks in Philippians, and I leaned over the uh, superintendent did it to make sure his scripture wasn't in his message. And, and, and he told me it was all right, so I could use it. In the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 23, and you can only use this scripture at saints' funerals. You can't use this at the drug dealer's funeral and the gang banger. You know, I know they be talking about he in heaven slanging on the gates. No, he's not. You can only use it. 
took in a while. We're not able to be here, but they have certainly sent their condolences to the family. So if I move on, please know that the family has been made aware. Some of our guests are not able to be here. The Frazier Community Singers as a musical tribute to the maestro. The Frazier Community Singers, are you here? They in the house. They are coming, we just want, while they're coming, there are so many people here that were at the foundation and the grassroots of Shay's beginning. I remember when Chantel and Sharice, when they had a Jerry curl. Got my fan. <laughs> Got my fan. No TV. <laughs> community that takes you back, Frazier. I'm not hot. God's got a blessing for you. I'm talking to y'all, I don't know what they're talking about. Hold on. Those were the days. Well, Superintendent Norman would say, you didn't get it right. Hey, y'all, all behind me are musicians. And we would get there at 9 or 10 o'clock and wouldn't leave until 7 or 8 at night. But that was the excellent spirit that this family had in the area of music. The Frazier community is saying, y'all look like y'all. Dexter, don't worry. You know, I have sweat. That's God for the Frazier community.
probably need these musicians came to have church. They did. Oh, yes, they did. If you are a Memphis surrounding area musician, I see Pat back there, flowers. Would you stand where all the organists, musicians, I see them there as Lewis. Right about it, William. Pastor Bartholomew Moore, and then another great pastor in our city doing great work for the kingdom of God, president of the Tennessee Central Jurisdiction. Jurisdiction of Shane Brewer. That is strong. Now, the son, Bishop W.M. Moore, has succeeded him. Speaking of the person, pastor of the great community, the temple church of God. The Bishop Brandon B. Porter. Let's say amen for each wonderful as they come in the world. Thank you. God bless you, Superintendent Smith, and to Bishop Porter, Superintendent Miller, and to all of the bishops and pastors, and to this bereaved family. I wish Bishop Adrian had a reach back and asked me what scripture I was going to use. <laughs> <laughs> but we are so grateful just to be able to celebrate such a wonderful life. Brown is one of those churches that Shade came by and ministered to as well. And I don't think I've ever been in Brown when everybody in the church can sing. Amen. <laughs> Today that cannot sing. But the song that is so well known by Shade is Tears so sweet to trust in Jesus. What's sweet about trusting in Jesus? I tell you, it's sweet because to live is Christ and to die is man. It's sweet because we know that when this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have another beautiful, not made by hands, eternal in the heaven. It's sweet, brothers and sisters, because some glad morning, in this life, when all the foolish children get together, what a time, what a time, it's sweet. God bless you, and certainly I want to honor the Pulpiteers, these great fishers and leaders that are here. Dylan is going to share just a few moments as well. And to Superintendent John Smith uh, for doing such an extraordinary job thus far. And to, to you, to you, so many of you that have come out, whether you uh, gave a false reason or not, you are here <laughs> on today. This Friday or Saturday, what's the day? Jobs. I don't want to <laughs> to, this, to this great family. The brother that was over here a moment ago, it's cute for a moment, you know. Um, see, all of us like to have fun. But he said they went to Hong Kong. I thought he didn't have a job. How did he go to Hong Kong? <laughs> <laughs> it's a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Hong Kong, the restaurant. They go the other way. I heard a child time. Never Hong Kong. 
Yes. Amen. For so many years, we've all bragged on Che and the gifts in his life, and thank you all for, for accommodating, not just you know yourselves and your travels, but many of us who accommodated by extending this opportunity for us to get back into the city of Memphis and participate. When I think about so many of our superintendents and past in Tennessee Center, I think have been recognized given opportunity to stand, but Tennessee Central is here on today. If you're here, shout amen, Tennessee amen. Central. Because we love the Norman family. Amen. Extreme gifts. We're all in awe of what God has done in, in their lives. Well, um, a couple things I'll say, and of course, Bishop Rogers didn't ask me about the scripture either. That wasn't the one I was going to use. I was going to use the story. No, I didn't. I'm going to use it from now on. No, I'm, going to use it. I'm like, man, why didn't I think of that? Bob, that, that's a wonderful, wonderful illustration. Can I read to you? Psalms 116 and 15. It depicts to me the most. Right up together in the jurisdiction. 
I want to thank you. I have um, Superintendent Parker want to share these moments with real quick to read the, the resolutions from Tennessee Central. Let me read this one if I could from a gentleman who just texted me. Couldn't be here, but he wanted to be um, heard. I'm deeply saddened by the whole going of my friend. My heart goes out to his family and friends there. And I thank God to play a small part in making sure his voice will be able to be heard for generations to come. Rest in peace, my friend. Fred Hammond. From the Tennessee Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ, resolution to the family of Minister Alan Burchett Roman, son of Superintendent James and First Lady Julie wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. And the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold and perishing, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 6 7. Our prayer for the Norman family is that the peace and abiding love of God will guide and sustain you. It is He and He only that can provide the comfort and strength to endure through the challenges of this life. Thanks be to God that He is enjoying the ultimate prize and have obtained the ultimate victory. We humbly submit ourselves to the sovereignty of God as he calls another soldier in his heaven, heavenly kingdom. We celebrate the life of this servant who has received rest from his labor and is now enjoying a crown of righteousness and his heavenly reward. Cares are all past and he's home at last, ever to rejoice. We, the bishop and members of the Tennessee Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, honor and respect the life of our Alan Von Shea We will continue to pray for the Norman family that God will strengthen, comfort, and provide peace during these challenges time, challenging times. Be it resolved that we, the bishop and members of the Tennessee Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, bow in humble submission to the will of God and commend the bereaved family to him who sees all and knows every heart after life's remaining ills are past. God Almighty will heal the wounded heart and comfort the troubled mind with pleasing, rather, yeah. and sad thoughts. We stand with you during this celebration of life to provide the <coughs> utmost act of kindness, care, and prayer in a session through him who strengthens us <coughs> and is able to meet every need. A copy of this resolution will be presented to the Norman family. A copy will, will be retained in the files of Tennessee Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, submitted in the spirit of humility on the 17th day of November, the year of our Lord, 2017. Bishop Brandon B. Boyd, Jurisdiction Appellate, second in succession, Tennessee Central Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he said this is a good God. Thank God for the Norman family. Right. And Chantel told me to take this time to give my remarks regarding Shay. Shay was like another son to me. Shay told me that he was going to retire and come and live with me and Marvin. And he told me, <laughs> said, since Elder Jefferson is a minister, Said, and I know he know the Bible, so he needs to build a room mm. onto the house. <laughs> <laughs> and when you say the phrase to no shape is to love shape, mm -hmm. to no shape is to love shape. Shay was unique. And my husband used to raise cars. Shay liked fast cars. And he was always talking about my husband rebuilding a motor for him. And Shay never brought that motor out there yet. <laughs> and Shay, sometimes he, I think he thought I could do anything. He would travel up and down the highways and he'd drive fast. And when he would get a ticket, he would tell me not to let his daddy know that he had gotten a ticket. And he would say, do you know anybody in 
Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> I said, Shay, give me the ticket number so I can get the officer's name. I got a couple. And I will try to see if I can work something out. And you know, when they say favor is not fair, favor is truly not fair because it always worked out for Shay. <laughs> I couldn't get some things worked out for myself, but I could get some things worked out for Shay. And I thank God for him. And we have several resolutions. I will not even attempt to read them all. Amen. I will just acknowledge where they're from. From the King of Glory Church of God in Christ, Bishop Dixon Wells, we thank you. And from the Tennessee Fifth Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ Music Department, <laughs> Bishop Jerry W. W. Taylor, and also from his home church, St. James Church of God in Christ in Grand Junction, Tennessee, Superintendent right. Norman. Right. And we have one from his brother-in-law, the is. Kingdom Coach, yes, Assembly of Churches and Ministries Incorporated, <laughs> Bishop-elect Andre T. Bailey, presiding prelate. Amen. All right. Amen. That's Shay's brother-in-law. And we also have a proclamation from Congressman Steve Cohen. And we have a proclamation from Such a good the city of Memphis, <laughs> Mayor Jim Strickland. <laughs> and this is the only one I will be reading. And it's from Memphis City Council Resolution. Whereas citizens from across the city of Memphis and, a, and indeed of all gospel music lovers are mourning the loss of great gospel singer Alan Van Shea Norman, who departed his earthly home on October the 26th of music lovers and his recognition as one of the most prolific singers, songwriters, and musicians regarding his song, Tis So Sweet a placement on the Wild Gospel 2005 CD that included singles by Donnie McClurkin featuring Yolanda Adams, C.C. Winan, Fred Hammonds, among others, and achieved platinum status. And whereas joining a long list of musician, musicians who have brought great acclaim to Memphis as a music city, the joyful noise that Alan Blanche Norman made throughout his life and career to praise his Lord and Savior will be a lasting tribute for his limited and his passing. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council this his 45th birthday on November the 2nd, 2017, be known as Alan Bun Shay, Shay Norman's Day throughout our city. Given by my hand and under the great seal of the city of Memphis, this the second day of November 2017, Berlin Board Chairman, Memphis City Council. And uh, the, uh, the family, Pastor Norman, had asked for if you have any cards, please get them to me. And the reason being is that when so many people are uh, embracing them or whatever, they may tend to lay something down and not have it, and they know that they would have it if they did. Amen. And I acknowledge that. With great, with gratitude, the family of Minister Alan Bunche Norman acknowledges and appreciates the expressions of love, support, and kindness that has been shown to us. Special thanks to Pastor Orr and Brown Baptist Church 
St. James Church of God in Christ, the Bolivar District, Tennessee Central Jurisdiction, Kurt Clayton and the Grammy Music Care Association, Bishop uh, Andre Betty, Melissa Moppy, Andrew William Cage. The family, thank you. I said, I'm not letting you come. I said, I'm not you come. I said, because you preach every time you supposed to sing. You preach for 20 minutes. And I said, you know, I said, I said, oh, just send me a tape. And, and I'm going to tell y'all just what he told me. So it was my name, John. He said, John, you going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> we we talked about each other so bad. And, uh, we would just see each other, and he would just out of nowhere, John, why your head so big? <laughs> she just loved to have fun. Yes, she did. And uh, it just really brought back brought back memories when I passed 385 Baby. this morning. And everybody that know him know us on 385, one of his fishing spots. And uh, it just brought back so many memories. I'm gonna miss my friend. And I'm gonna miss youth congresses at Lane College. Yeah. If, uh, Pastor Marlis Flowers had a bell. And he would chase me and Shane because we wanted to go down to the girls' floor. <laughs> <laughs> and he would take out his belt and she would say, John, come on, take the steps, take the step. <laughs> and we would take the step. Those were our fun days. We had so much fun. And I'm going to miss my friend. I'm going to miss my friend. But I'm praying for Superintendent Norman Amen. and the Norman family. Sharif, Shantel, Asia, Shalom. Asia, Alexa, we love y'all. We love y'all so much. All y'all names start with an A. I love y'all so much. We appreciate y'all so much. And if y'all don't want to know who his kids are and who his sisters and brothers are, you don't have to look for them. Just come down here to the front row. You can spot them anywhere. You can be in New York. It's, that's Shades, do That's Shantae. And uh, Superintendent Norman and Mother Norman, you've done a great job. Mm -hmm. One of his good friends, Jamel Strong. Yeah. One of yeah. Yes. Great voices in music industry. We have tributes from the music industry and Nikki Ross. They're coming in that order and following them. Another young man that Bishop Porter talked about that we all grew up together. He was one of the quiet ones. He was one of the reserved ones until the Lord called him to the ministry. Always had his hand on him. There's always something unique about this young man. And uh, he is doing a great job here in the city of Memphis. God continues to elevate him in the work of the kingdom. Our friend and brother, pastor of the Citadel of Deliverance. Oh, yes. Church of God in Christ. Uh, he'll be coming to share words of comfort, Superintendent Linwood Dillard Sr., uh, Junior, I'm sorry, and then musical tributes to the maestro, Whitehaven District Perfected Praise Reunion Choir, and the family of Minister Alan Bunshay Norman, along with the company. Wow. And they're going to come with a musical tribute following 
superintendent, and then Wood Dillard, and then we will be in the hands of the funeral directors. Bless God for all, Jamel Strong. people, one of the nicest, most gifted people I've ever met, amen, that was not haughty, that was not arrogant, that was not stuck up. Uh, everything about his life was service. Everything about how he transacted business in the kingdom was about service. Um, I would call him Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> and he would call me Jolly Green Jolly. <laughs> and I was just thinking, you know, about some of the, we, every time we spoke, we never had a disagreement. We never had a, let me correct that, we never had an argument. <laughs> we never had an argument, but any time that I would speak to him, uh, we would speak to each other, and it was always filled with laughter and joy. Laughter and joy. And one of the things I thought about when I got the call from Chantel to do this today, I thought about how I used to host a conference called the Triple M Conference, mm -hmm. and Shay would come every year, and he would come and he would serve the pride out of other musicians. We'll be trying to shut down. Shay is over sweeping the floor downstairs in the kitchen. Shay is over picking up trash. And I said, Shay, wait a minute, you're my guest. What are you doing? He said, no, brother, I came to serve. And that's his heart. And I would see him have a posture of service until it made other people change their posture and have to do what he was exampling. Because what nobody ever on our prayer of our singing. So I remember one year that uh, we were singing Superintendent uh, Norman. We had a concert of the different artists that were there. And Shay was up ministry. He was singing and playing on the keyboard. And Shay, uh, at the end of his song, he said, don't clap, don't just lift your hands. You know, anybody heard Shay before you've ever heard that before? He said, just lift your hands, keep your hands lifted. And keep your hands lifted. And that was a glory that was in the place. And then, amen, the glory moment had come and the glory moment had gone. <laughs> and I walked over to Shay uh, and I bent down. You know what to hear me? I said, is it all right if I tell the people that they can put their hands down now so they can move on with the <laughs> But the funny thing about that is Shay bent over at the keyboard and he was so tickled about that until tears was coming down his face and the whole church thought we were, they, we were in the spirit. <laughs> Shay was just like, oh, you crazy. <laughs> because it was time for us to move on to the next part. But he cried, that's a moment I'll never forget, and so many other things. To God be the glory for the great and wonderful things he's done. What, the reason I can stand here tonight, today rather, in strength is because Shay's not dead, he's just asleep. And if we live 
this life to live again, we can see him again. Yes. God, I thank you and we honor you for the life of Alan Von Shadon. God bless you. Ross. <laughs> I wanted to hear you play and sing for yourself because I love what I said, but you follow me so well, it's like you kind of already know where I'm going before I get there. And so we definitely had a musical connection, and not only that, but he was my friend, my brother that loved me, and I loved him, and I loved his, I loved his family. Yeah. Um, Sean, Sharice, and Shallon, and Pastor, and Mother Judy, I love all of you guys. I don't get to see y'all all the time, but just know that I'm a Norman too. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of this.
Anthony Bryan, please, none of those comments. This is hard for people. So. Just before Superintendent Dillard comes, Superintendent James Norman, the father, she has requested just for a quick tribute, all of the Bolivar District, Rossville District, Leewood Temple, Central Jurisdictional Choir members to come quickly. All of the Baptist churches that she ever played in. I'm serious. I'm, I'm mouthing what he's telling me right now. I'm communicating to you that he wants everybody to come. He said, pack the choir stand. You can hear him. He said, pack the choir stand. There we go. And the pulpit area, and he wants you to come quickly. And we're quickly is the word. You. But today he wants a great celebration. Everyone that this Lord all in his hand. <laughs> I put it on his hand. Oh, no. This no. and that. No, no. I need a new fan. You just come quickly. All right, mother, put them shoes. <laughs> come on, people of God. Derek, Jesus. Hey, while the choir coming, when I was little, I couldn't pop gum. When I got older, I lost a couple teeth. I can pop gum now. Somebody give God praise. When I was younger, I couldn't pop gum because I had all my teeth. Now I lost a couple teeth. <laughs> Y'all hear that? I can pop gum. Baby. And this side is better than the right side. What's this, left? Okay, back to our program. <laughs> He's going to give us a tribute as we organize ourselves. Can we hear you, Dr. Derrick Jackson? Dr. Derrick? Derrick Jackson. Timothy. It's Tim Mason, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that's a testimony. You know you wanted to pop gun when you was little? I can pop now. Okay, y'all. I just was just, it's a heavy day. Just trying to bring a little joy. It's the Ha, ha, ha. 
When I started preaching, and I remember Shay coming to one of the services, he was just staring at me. Couldn't believe that I was now preaching because I hardly ever said anything. But just as the, I believe, the personality of the Norman, Superintendent Norman, and all of the family was always encouraging and pushing. And I would dare say that I was able to break out of my shell because of the Norman family, especially Shay Norman. I think we ought to praise God again for this great family. Love them and celebrate them. Superintendent, we love you. And First Lady Norman, we love you as well. First Lady Norman was the person that designed my wife and I's wedding invitations and wedding programs. Uh, and Chantel and Sharice and Shallon, I remember going to the house and always would have a good time uh, as we shared for a number of years growing up. Listen, I know that the hour is far spent, and I'm not going to be before you long. Uh, as I was sitting there considering what it is that could be said or should be said, someone that was in scripture that was reflective of Shay's life, I found a young man by the name of Asaph in scripture from Psalm 73, where he said, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But Asaph said, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Verse 16, he says, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Then in verse 17, he says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. And if I were to try to take the topic in any ways, I would talk about the crisis of a Levite. Everybody say the crisis of a Levite. The crisis of a Levite. We live in a world that seems to be so unfair. It's many situations and circumstances, such as a father's daughter is murdered and then the murderer is let go and released because of a misstep in the process. People working and doing the right thing, but yet it's not sufficient enough to provide for their family. Innocent people, young and old, being killed by terrorists. Drunk drivers taking the lives of the people and they themselves walk away. And then the untimely early death of loved ones who are relatively young and gifted and charismatic and full of potential. And in those moments when you consider that and even when we look at Shane's life and now his death, there are moments that our theological uh, ideals are clashing and bumping heads with our reality. And then it the, the causes us to really consider the ancient stumbling block of good men. That the present prosperity of wicked men are often more what we see. And then we also see the sorrows of the godly. Yes, sir. And here we have Asaph in the 73rd number of Psalms where he writes a response to his disappointment and crisis of faith. 
What you have to understand about Asaph is Asaph was a musician. He was a prophet. He was a Levite. He was a priest of David during the time before the first temple. And even when the tabernacle was still set on the temple mount. Asaph was the first musician. And I call him a musician priest. And he said a blessing and was state a blessing over the tabernacle in Jerusalem. When you look at Asaph, he was the author of 12 of the Psalms in the book of Psalms. And only second to King David in the authorship in the book of Psalms. So in biblical terms, you can say that Asaph was a big deal. And then after David, King David had emerged and brought the Ark of the Covenant and Tabernacle to Jerusalem and had completed the work, he decreed that Asaph would have a special role as a Levite. What you have to understand about a Levite, the Levite leadership, they were responsible for worship in the house of God. This family, this family of Levites were committed to the worship experience. And David placed Asaph in charge of all of the regular music in the, the temple of God. And he opens up this song admitting that he had felt betrayed not only by life but by God himself. Because of the unfairness and injustice and inequality of life. And so he begins his discourse through a lens where he is looking and considering his suffering by his personal resentment and his confusion. And basically Asaph was questioning God and saying, God, why have you allowed this to happen to me? Here it is, Asaph knew how to sing in tune, play in tune, but his life was out of tune. Oh, wow. Anybody in this room ever served God and it seemed like what you preached about and you saw other people getting delivered through and delivered from, you yourself were still struggling. Right. But Asaph, who was a great songwriter and a musician, he saw his life circumstances were not parallel with his beliefs. His faith and theological theories were replaced by his personal pain and disillusion. And so he says, my feet were almost gone. Asaph, in other words, was saying, basically, I can barely stand, and, and his uprightness was going away. He said in Psalm 27, fret not thyself because of evildoers, for they'll soon be cut down and wither away like the green grass. Asaph was confused, but he said, it was not until I went into the sanctuary of God. I know that a lot of people have a lot of questions today. That shame would be taken out of this world at 45 years old. In the prime of his life, in the prime of his career. And it's hard to find questions. But let me tell you something, people of God. The quality of answers we receive depends on where we look for those answers. Some of us are looking for answers all in the wrong places. But the Asaph said, it wasn't until I went into the sanctuary of God. And I don't know about you, but that's why the saints of God, we don't celebrate a life like the world does when someone goes into eternity. Because we're not here because someone died, but we're here because someone has lived. And today, as we celebrate this life, thank God that we're in the sanctuary of God. Because it's when you get a renewed vision of God, and it's where worship puts God at the center of our vision, that we will begin to see life for really how it is. And Asaph discovered that prosperity and goodness did not have anything to do with the lack of adversity. But he began to understand that if you're going to understand how God operates, it's about being in the presence of God. And I want to say to you this evening that one thing that we can rest assured of, that as Shea committed his life to God, and now he's in the presence of God, it all makes sense. Because the ultimate good in life is not prosperity, nor the absence of pain, but the nearness of God. Can you look at somebody next to you and say, God is standing by. God is standing and I want to let you know that one of these days, all of us are going to have to leave this world. But even as we heard someone read a few moments ago, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump of God, for the trump of God shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Because if I tell them, we shall be changed. We shall be changed. Maybe in the crisis of faith where we're trying to say, God, I believe you for this, but I'm experiencing that. But you got to remember that the Lord himself one day shall descend from heaven with a shout. 
with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead of Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive shall remain to be caught up together to be the Lord in the air. It's like a reunion today that we've seen people we haven't seen in years. We remember the days of central jurisdiction, the days of Bolivar District, the days of Rossfield District, the days of Rosemark District. But even as we look around at this great reunion, there's still some people missing because they've already gone back into glory. But one of these days, there's going to be a great getting up morning that she is already on the other side. I wish I had some help in here. The Bible lets us know that we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And that's what I'm working on. I'm working on being caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Won't you lay your hand on somebody and say, neighbor, I plan to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Notice what Asaph said. It wasn't until I went into the sanctuary of God. And that's why the psalmist said in Psalm 27, with the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, they came among me to eat of my flesh. They stumbled and fell. The one host shall around me, cast the camp against me. My heart shall not fear, for though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. He said, in one thing have I beside of the Lord, and then will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. And then in Psalm 23, he picks up about the power of being in the presence of the Lord. He closes out Psalm 23 by saying, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I come to tell the church today we're weeping on this side but shame is in the presence of the Lord. He's around the throne with the twin forever bowing down and one of these old days when it's all over when we saw the last song preach the last sermon Jesus! 
talent, children, there's one last thing I want to leave with you. Be not dismayed.
Will you stand on your feet? This is the last. Many of you are already standing. But as a last tribute to shame, Whitehaven District Choir, Perfect Praise Reunion Choir, the family of ministry, Alan Bunch, Shay North, and the company. It's not all together. Oh, they're coming up one by one. Oh, thank you so much for coming. I thought we was going to have a great celebration. Let's say amen for Whitehaven District. Will you do that? And those that are called, will you follow them in that order? Amen.
Thank you so much. I love y'all. to respect, I gave you love in return. You have always been in my life, the thick and thin, and on my lonely journey, without you, will begin. For you are my hero, forever and a day. You will always remain that hero, till I meet you again someday. I will embrace you in my arms, and hold on you tight. This whole row out of order. I will stand by your side, and you will never leave this life. 
miss you so much. The pain does not ease. I pray you are happy and finally at peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Seeing it from my being here. Yes. And I do thank God for my life, and I thank God for Shay's life. Yes. And I want to tell y'all this evening. Tell us. If all of us miss the mark and go to hell, yeah. it's a sad story. Yeah, buddy. There's too many preachers up in here. Well, There's too many diggers up in here. There's too many loved ones up in here. His people's everywhere. And from everywhere. Yes, And I do really thank God for just lying me the opportunity me. to just say something about my grandson. Lying. He was an unusual young man. He was unusual. He was good. And then there was some spots that he would hit. And, and he would let you know about it. Tell them. And so I thank God. But I just want to say this. If Shay was going to song, he would leave the house and go up on Neely mm -hmm. and hit Neely and go all the way around to 302. <laughs> and when he get on 302, he would go to 385 and he would go out until he get the 64 highway. All right. And he'd make his journey to where he had to go. Mm -hmm. And when he got ready to come back, he would take that same route come back and go all the way around town to make it back home. That's just the way he traveled. And I noticed him lately, this little fella here got his same mark. He do the same thing. Yeah. And so they, they move no, out. It's, it's coming your way, brother. It's coming your way. <laughs> and so I thank God, and I, I, I'm just gonna just get out of the way because it's too much have been said. It's too much. It's too much have been dead. But walk with me, Lord. Walk with me.
Yeah. I mean, they, y'all are still here. <laughs> y'all still here. Praise the Lord. I'm just so honored. But this is really good. Shay is gone. We celebrate his life. Okay, here's his daughters. I just want to say I will greatly miss my father, my best friend, the first man I ever loved. That's good right there. <laughs> yeah, that's real good. That's real good. <laughs> God, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> most elegant, loving, most eloquent man in life. What a combination. Right. Right. I remember when uh, me and Alexis were younger, we have just be coming back from church, and he said he'd kick off his shoes and say his feet are hurting, and we were off to massage it. And we got this close and passed out because it's good. <laughs> Same James. He did this at a gas station one time in front of AutoZone. 
<laughs> Shame. But I'm so glad that he gave me those life lessons about what it means to love one another. Because this is the time when we all, this is the time when we need each other close. And I know sometimes I think about like he's he's the minister of music in God's choir. And here's my big mama singing lead. <laughs> he's probably somewhere around here laughing at all of us, talking about if only you knew where I was, you wouldn't shed a tear. Right. <laughs> Y'all love my daddy so much. gone and mama's gone, all y'all have is each other. He got from he got that from the tall man over here and the little short mama. <laughs> because that's also what they taught him, me, Sharice, and Chapman. All we have is each other. Right. When they're gone, all we have is each other. Yeah. I'm gonna tell this little story then we're gonna sing, the company is gonna sing. Shay and I, Shay's three years older than me. And my aunt took us to a park. And uh, I was three, Shay was five, six. Yeah. And uh, Shay was playing, and I was playing. And this little boy took a stick and kept hitting Shay. And so my aunt went and asked his mother, could you please have your kid to, you know, your child to stop hitting Shay? And the lady said, oh, they're just playing, they're fine, they're playing, they're just fine. So we went on playing, and the little boy came back with the stick, hit my brother again. Uh -oh. Yeah, I took that stick. <laughs> <laughs> I beat that little boy up at three years old, because he was messing with my big brother. And the lady came to my aunt and said, your child is hitting my son. My aunt said, they just playing. <laughs> that was my Aunt Barbara. <laughs> Move on. I was in elementary. Shay used to come walk. He used to, mom and daddy used to have him. He got out of school earlier than I did. He went to East. I went to Grandwood. He got out at 215. He rode the bus home. He would come walk and pick me up. Some bullies decided that they want to mess with my brother. I found me another stick. <laughs> and I did what I had to do. My brother wasn't a fighter, but I was. And throughout life, I found myself always protecting him and always being their protector. Even when he was in the hospital, I would go and protect him. No, nobody can see him. Nobody can come and talk to him. No, because he needs his rest. I would protect him. That's not my job anymore. Because he's with the ultimate protector now. And I give that over into the hands of God because he allowed me to protect my brother for 45 years. And yes, I would fight you and go off on you about my brother. Don't mind saying it. Still, to this day, I would do that. But um, the company is coming. This group behind me, Shay was so excited about starting his own ministry and starting his own choir that we actually had mini church Bible study. 
on Monday night rehearsals and Sharice and he would get into arguments because Sharice would say, I didn't come here for church. You are not my pastor. I came here to sing. And if you're not going to teach me any songs, then I can leave. And he said, well, go on and get up. She said, okay, I'm leaving, but I'll be back next week. <laughs> Those are the arguments and quarrels with all the people behind me. We would go over Martha's mom's house and we would watch. We would go to Young's. Thank God nobody died from Young's. Young's. <laughs> We would go to Young's and eat oh. and come back to Martell's house and watch Steaks all of the Ace Ventura Pet Detective movies <laughs> the whole night. So many memories, I can't tell them all. But we're going to sing some of Shay's legacy songs from when he started us. One thing about it, if you didn't know how to sing, you join Shay Norman's choir, you gonna know how to be able to keep a note. <laughs> because he would work with you, just like everybody said, Shay was that person that he didn't care. He didn't care if your church was back off a dark, dusty road and the bridge only had two two by fours to get across. He didn't care about that. He didn't care that you didn't have any money to pay Shay Norman. He didn't care about that. All he cared about was doing the work of God and making sure yeah. that the music ministry was spread and God's praises was spread. He didn't care about money. He always knew that God was going to take care of them. Shay, just having you in our lives made the difference. We're going to go back down memory lane Come on. for just a little while. Y'all been here this long. Y'all might as well go and stay a little while longer. Amen. We ain't going to be there much longer. I promise you we're not. But uh, Shay has a special announcement as well. Come after we're done. Amen. Say amen for the company. Same company.
watching y'all
two smart cases yeah. this year. Yeah. Absolute favorite song. Not because of what I've done. Yeah. Not because of what I didn't do. Not because of what I didn't say. Not because I walked a certain way. But by the grace of God. Yeah.
so that we can live in his glory. In the place that we will be. So that we can live in his glory. In the place that we will be. And these things happen only. The glory we will be, and these things happen only in the place that we will be. Now receive this word of truth that's come to help us see. Don't fall asleep, but stay plugged in. Keep your hands lifted and receive. Don't miss one word of simple. For it could mean defeat. So we'll just keep on receiving. To see the place that we will be. transition and even now as you're standing kind father we thank you today thank you lord that we're not here because someone have died someone have lived a glorious life giving and bringing honor to your name continue to wrap your loving arms around this family bring strength to them in the days to come thank you lord for the spirit of worship the spirit of prayer that will continue even after these moments Uphold them with the right hand of your righteousness. And we commend them in your hand in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, we want to also bless the food that will be received uh, in the gymnasium. Mary, Father, we thank you for the food. We ask that you would bless it and sanctify it. Let it be for the nourishment of to other bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 